Hi, I'm Ryan Holger and welcome back to TEC Tube. We are continuing our series on the infinity and evolution controls. This would also apply to the brand new ion control system for zoning that's coming out as well. So we're going to focus on zoning. We've done tons of other videos on just the stat for regular systems. You can reference those videos. Actually, to click up on the link, you can watch those now if you like. But this one is specifically on zoning. So we have our normal, in this case, evolution stat on the wall, or on the furnace, rather, in our case. We have a zoning panel that we've added to the system. We've added three zone dampers, just like this over here. Right, and normally you'd have that ducted out through all the zones, but we just have it in the lab here. We have three zone dampers like that for three unique zones. This board could handle up to four different zones, and you can actually expand that up to a maximum of eight. You can get another board just like this one, pop it in up here, and you get up to a maximum of eight zones. We only have three in our case, so we only needed a four zone panel. Down the left hand side is all the damper wiring. Everything is three wires for the zone dampers. Right? There are some systems out there in the market that are two wires. Those are typically non-modulating dampers. In our case, they all modulate, so we need three wires. We have a closed, we have an open, and we have a common. And we want to open the damper, we can make the connection between open and common, and the damper would start opening up. And then when we break the connection, the damper would freeze wherever it's at. And we could pulse it more open, or we could pulse it more closed. That's how we modulate it and why we need three wires to do that. Now on the right-hand side, we have all of our zone sensors wired up. We only have one in this case, because this guy is going to be zone number one. And for zone number two, we're going to do a special zone. So that just leaves us zone number three over here. Or rather, I said that wrong. That's zone two and that's zone three. But the same idea. Those are two wire thermistors in this case. Polarity doesn't matter. Wire them however you want. And then we have a smart sensor that will take the place of our zone number three sensor. This is kind of like this guy, but he's a communicating sensor. So just like all the other infinity evolution type stuff and ion stuff, we have ABCD type wiring from him to the furnace, out to the condensing unit, and now in this case over to the smart sensor as well. So he's four wires, ABCD type cabling, just like the regular stat would have been. So let's go ahead and power this guy up. So just like a regular system without zoning, it's going to go through its power up sequence. We did have one other accessory we added on optionally. It's a leaving air temperature sensor. It's kind of nice to have as zones throttle down. It's kind of like nice to have that as a belt and suspenders safety backup, if you will. But it's a totally optional accessory. The zone panel normally has a cover on it, right? So it looks clean. This would be up in zone number two in the wall. This would be on zone three in the wall. That would be on zone one in the wall. And you just have this downstairs. So it went out and found an indoor unit, which in this case was the furnace. Now it's looking for our outdoor unit. It'll find that. Just told John to make sure that the disconnect is on so it'll actually find it. If not, that's OK. So if we don't find it, but like it did here, it asks us if we don't have cooling or if we have one stage cooling. right? If we had a NIM card, it would ask us even more. I'm actually going to go back and give it one more shot at the outdoor because I forgot we had pulled the disconnect on it earlier. All right, so John put our breaker back in. We found our outdoor unit. So now it moves over and asks us for our evaporator model number. It doesn't always do that, but because our outdoor unit is a five-stage inverter, which, by the way, is phenomenal for zoning systems, all zoning systems, you'd be better off having the five-stage inverter and the modulating gas valve. We can turn those systems down, down really low when there's only one zone calling. So in the case, this case, our model number is a CNPV2417, which we already knew. Click, click that. Looks for a SAM module accessory, which we won't have. And then after that, it'll go look for a zoning panel, which it will, in fact, find. All right, in this case, it found uh, two zones, zone one and zone two. It did not find my remote sensor because I did not yet configure uh, my zone number on that. So I'll tell him he's zone three, and I will save him, in which case I need to, uh, when he's done saying wait, then I can go back and tell him to find zone three. These come defaulted to zone two for these smart sensors if you're going to use them, uh, but if you want to use them for zones three through eight, then you would need to give them an address and tell them they're zone three, four, five, six, and so on. So we're zone three in this case. So I told it to retry again. It's looking for all the zoning systems that it can see. So now I have user interface zone one, remote sensor zone two, smart sensor zone three. All right, so when you first turn it on, it asks you for the zone number. If you want to change it later, you can also do that. And if I had more zones, it would list them there. 
So I'd say next, it asks me some basic setup questions. If you want more information on all those setup questions, check out our regular videos on the evolution and infinity controls uh, and ion controls, and you can see all of those. So I'm just going to blow through them right now. And it gives a confirmation of everything we have now, this time, as opposed to last time, we have zoning systems added, zones one, two, and three. It's going to do an airflow verification test. It's the exact same test that it does on a normal, non-zoned evolution infinity or ion system. The difference here is it does the test with all the dampers wide open. Then later on, it's going to do the test with the dampers open one at a time. That way it can determine how much CFM is going to in into each individual zone. And if you guys can hear that little ticking noise, that's the little motor opening its way up to make sure everybody's wide open. Our furnace is going to ramp up and we'll do our airflow test. All right, so our airflow verification test is now complete. It came back and gave us a little report. We have 906 CFM with 0.32 inches of static. That's not very much compared to a real house, but we're in the lab and our ductwork is like 15 feet long, so that's expected. The blower RPM was 787. Now the calculated minimum CFM is 300, and normally that's not very exciting to you guys, but with the zoning system, that is gonna come into play. That means between our three zones, if I want to be able to run heating and cooling for just one of them, that zone's gonna to have to take 300 CFM in order for that to happen, if the other two zones want nothing. So that will come into play on these zoning systems. I'm gonna hit next. Now, because I have three zones, it tells me it's gonna take five extra minutes to do an individual test for each one of the zones. If I only had two zones, it would take three. If I had eight zones, it would take 10. In this case, it's going to take me five more minutes for three uh, additional zones. So it's gonna open zone one by himself and close down two and close down three and test his CFM and static and then close one and try two, and then three, and we'll have all the individual data for each of those. So uh, as it goes through that whole process, we'll, we'll, we'll speed it up on the camera here so you guys don't have to sit here before us with five minutes of, it, of time. So we'll speed that whole thing up. And I'll go get a drink. So it came back and gave us a little duck assessment report. Uh, our zones are pretty equally sized in this application, but 31, 33, and 26% are my zones. It also did a test with the dampers all uh, closed off to see what the leakage of the whole system was, which is 10%. It's actually really low. Most of the time I see like 30, 35, 40% leakage, but in this case, our duct system is super, super tiny. We have like five feet of duct on the main run and like literally no duct on the two other zones. So it's pretty low leakage. Uh, relatively speaking, but that still would not comply with code today. But we're in a lab, not a house. All right, so that's it for the basic setup. This thing is actually ready to operate and run, but there are two other things we want to show you. We want to show you how to name the zones, and we want to show you how to adjust some of the air flows in there if some of them get a little bit louder than they need to be, and things like that. For naming the zones, the dealer or the customer could do that. If I scroll down in the menu over here, go to zone names, click on any one of them, I can pick a name from a drop-down list. Okay, that's the living room. Great, save that. Or I can create my own name and type in whatever I want. Whatever it is, right? And I'll save that name. It's a good idea to name them even if you're the installer and you have no idea what the customer wants because later on you and them aren't going to know what they are. If you say Southwest Bedroom, you'll probably remember what it is. If you say Zone 3, you have no idea. Um, then what we can do is we can go into the, uh, the advanced service settings. Uh, we can actually configure some extra stuff on the zoning system that way, and that'll allow us to uh, adjust CFM and airflows and things like that that a regular consumer would not really mess around with. So we'll go into that mode here. So when I go down to setup, which we've done in other videos with you guys, thermostat, furnace, AC, if I scroll down, I actually have one for zoning. I can disable all my zoning. If you want to turn it off for some reason, maybe it's new construction, you don't have all your zones you know, physically uh, dampered in yet or something like that. I can have zone offsets. This is where I can set the temperature offset, like calibrate the sensors. When we do it on our regular system, there's a screen for that. But now that I have two, three, four, eight of these things, I need another screen to do that. So I can scroll through my zones and I can add plus or minus five degrees to each one to make it match whatever my handheld monitor says. I have airflow limits. This one is pretty important. 
Uh, right now they're all adjusted to high for all the zones and it tells you what CFM that correlates to on those. But I can go in and tweak any one of these. So if I go into the living room zone, all right, I'm already on high, I can go to max, which is more than high, right? That's the maximum amount of air we could possibly shove through there. Or I can go lower down, medium high, medium, medium low, low, and so far down the line. So if I'm getting too much sound, I can adjust those guys here if I wanted to. And I can also adjust the duct assessment time here. So by default, this happens at one in the afternoon. Now, most of you guys know that this Evolution Infinity Zoning has been around since 2005. When it first came out, we did the duct assessment at 1 a.m. That didn't work so well. People are sleeping, they hear the noise, not cool. Now we do it at 1 p.m. because most people are not home at that time. They're at work or school or whatever. But if your customer doesn't like that time and they want it at a different time, you can adjust it here. So every, every day at that exact time, it'll do that whole airflow test that we just did a couple minutes ago to make sure everybody's still in balance and he knows the CFM of all of his zones, registers change and open and close and all that stuff. All right, so that's the zone setup. We can back ourselves out of there. Um, the other one that we want to go to is on checkout. So we have gas, AC, humidifier like we had before on other videos. And if I scroll down, I have one for zoning. So I got some additional information here. One of those, airflow limits. Now you saw the other screen, I could change the airflow limits, high, medium, high, all that stuff there, or I could do it here. I always do it here, because when I do it here, I can also test it and see what it's going to sound like when I do that, all right? So I could test it and I can see my CFM actually changing. So this is the better screen to use to do that. I can scroll through my zones up top here, living room, weird name zone, zone three, whatever I call them. And I can see what my airflows are gonna be. I have different airflows for home when you're there and away when you're not there. Because when you're away, you don't care if it's a little bit loud because you're literally not in that room. So if the system needs to bleed a little bit of air off into that room in order to have enough airflow to run for the other zones, that's why that number's a little bit higher there. But I can make these whatever I want them to be and hit start and then listen and see what that noise level is going to be in those individual zones. When that guy's open, in this case, 365 CFM by himself and the other zones are shut down. Right? So that's how that would work. Damper sensor tab. I can read all the temperatures on all these guys, whatever they're reading. And I can also see what the damper is doing right now on its own. Is it open? Is it closed? What is it doing? So I can check the zones that way. I'm gonna let that kill John. I, actually, I'm not. I told John I was going to let it kill it and we'll go over that. That's what happened when I tried to shove all the air through one zone when I did that test a minute ago. So it could be pretty loud. You want to do that to make sure the customer is acceptable with that sound. If not, you need to have a different, sound, a different CFM rating on there. Um, damper sensor we just did. Duct accessories. Assessment. That's what the last report was that we had when we did the startup. If I run another one, it would give me a new data here. And then the sensor types, what do I have in each zone? User interface, this guy, remote sensor, smart sensor, and eventually wireless sensors. But that's for a future video. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea of how to set one of these guys up. It's not super hard. There's not a lot of things to configure. Pretty much as long as you got everything wired correctly, and as long as you address your smart sensors, if you have smart sensors, everything else pretty much does itself. Tweak some airflows if they say it's a little bit loud in one of the rooms, and you're done. That's it. There's no bypass to set up, nothing like that. So hopefully that helps you guys out, and we'll see you again on the next video.